honey, I'm home. Greg Cotton's back down with us this week. And this is amazing. It's like I left 85 and now I wake up in 25 degree. But we are cleaning up around the boat because we're getting ready to move her. Where'd you get that? Mosquito somewhere. Well, we thought yesterday it was cold. Today is cold. Yeah, who thought when we were getting ready to launch in August that ice would be a problem? This is not snowman building stuff. <laughs> Look at that, it's just like sand. I figure if I get it off the boat now, it won't melt and make ice sheets up here though. Oh, it's coming down about as fast as I can sweep it off, but I'm making the progress. Thank God for guys like Greg over here. He has everything in his garage. So I said, do you have a heater? He said, yeah. Those feet are not red from the cold. They're, they're red from that beautiful Caribbean tan I got. Hey, you. You made it. Welcome aboard. The longest drive up here I've ever made. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> Brian's with us now, and Rory made it in. Yeah, that's that's Matthew. He's stuck in an airport somewhere. He had three planes this morning. I don't think he's going to make it. Well, what's one more delay? Yeah, we've been pushed off till Monday at the earliest because uh, they want the ice to come off the crane while people aren't standing underneath it. And they want the ice off the dock so people don't slip and fall on their asses or go over the railing into the water. Yeah, makes some sense. So maybe we'll get a little sunshine. It'll warm up a bit. Monday. Got a heater in there trying to warm up the solenoids. Boom up. Nothing. Winch work. And nothing else. Are you sure there's not a valve or something closed? I mean, it sounds like the VMAX like pushing up against the closed valve. Like it's. No, there's no closed valve. Okay. It's like Doug is looking for a leak or a lost contact. He's just gonna delete this footage anyways, but he left the camera. Keep working. What else might be wrong? That pump sure is streaming a lot. Yeah, but the, the anchor. It's all because he didn't turn on that valve right there. I like the optimism. <laughs> you can't drop that down and speed, can you? Um, no. That makes it exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, first you complain it's too slow, now it's too fast, huh? Hey, monkey paw. Oh damn, that anchor will never work. Can't even stop Brandon. One lesson I learned on Charlie's boat is everything will get wet. Everything. And the job up here today is to find totes that will fit into our container areas here so we can organize ramen noodle soup. A ramen noodle soup. The only thing that I cooked and ate all by myself on the uh, boat, it stayed down for like a minute and a half. Yeah, chicken flavored. I still have it in my mouth now. <laughs> Didn't you fit a box in here? Oh yeah. Cool. Which one? Well, the, the, the bottles. It doesn't matter because even if we can get one box in there, it'll be something we can keep. Yeah, dry stuff in and beautiful. Is that like Burning Man? I guess so. Betsy was thinking about some kind of a smaller version of Burning Man. We bought a burning baby. Burning baby. <laughs> 
<laughs> Somehow so horrible. the marketing department shot it down. <laughs> And Matthew here has been uh, tinkering with the boat because it needs a new battery. That's Apparently leaving the switch on for a month didn't work. Well, that did better than I thought. We didn't have to use any ether. She just, I, that cold start button, man, that thing, once I found that, it's like, yeah, fuck, that does do something. It's got a little solenoid in the bottom of the, uh, uh, it's not a carburetor. Once you Injection know pump? the sequence Injection of buttons, pump. Yeah. if you get used to it, you'll be fine. Yeah, you just gotta work your way up. Well, then I'll put her back together, Captain. All right. Did you make covers for this or a seat or something? No. No? No. You're gonna burn your butt off in the- That's what the fan's side. for. Oh no, Doug, what? that thing is fucking hot. It's a frying pan. It is, you pussies. We drove it from the, <laughs> the landing over. Oh my and god. Clint's ass couldn't sit on it. Who's? Clint. Oh, of course, he doesn't have an ass. I'm not talking about the heat from the engine, I'm talking from the sun. No, that was no. bad too. Burn your legs just off. Just stand, it. I don't sit. Yeah, okay. There you go. Don't sit at all? It was a lot of fun before I put these sponsors on the outside. This thing was so cool, it, it leaned like a motorcycle in a turn. <laughs> I nearly threw Bart out of the boat though, so I just thought, okay, we're gonna have to do something about like that. It goes like two knots. How it, could it lean? It does, it does all right. seven knots and it leaned and it was great. You could turn into it. Yeah, go ahead and butter it up. Naga hide out of the school bus. Yeah, I know. Yeah. This will help keep it from drying out the sun a little bit. We'll put some on the sim cloth and see what it does there too. Looks like it's gonna fill in all the holes. That's good. Yeah, all right, fine. That's pretty. A little water to turn. Yeah, fine. Excellent. So the idea is that this stops the UV a little bit, right? Just you use this on your boat? I use it on our vinyl. Do you use it on your cow horns? I don't have cow horns. Do you have a boat without cow horns? Oh my God, what kind of boat is that? I live in Michigan. We don't have cow horns. <laughs> Yeah, well, there's been a lot of questions about what do you do if you can't launch the boat? And I think I've come up with something. We have a kitchen, we have a location, we have workers, taco stand. Tacos! Oh. Tacos! <laughs> oh, hello! Can I have tacos? You want tacos? Taco! Tacos, One taco! One taco! One! Is that your meaty taco? It's as meaty as you're gonna get, buddy. One drink. Ah! Number 47! I need a vegan taco, please. Get off my boat with your vegan taco bullshit. Number <laughs> seven. Burrito? Burrito. Oh. Drink. <laughs> Burrito on a Pepsi. Burrito. Pepsi. No coke. Pepsi for you. <laughs> Chris, seriously, not a taco stand, but if it, the boat does roll over and turtle and sink tomorrow, then miniature golf, okay? I am serious about the miniature golf thing. I've always wanted to build a miniature golf course, so that's up next. So if sinker goes sinker. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the deal is miniature golf, not tacos. So if this is SV sinker, then and it goes down tomorrow, you can see that we will be building a miniature golf course. We may do that anyway. Okay, so tomorrow's the big day we see. If Reddit just had the good sense of humor without being douchebag, you know, but they're always, somebody over there has always been offended. You know, you did this prank and it made me feel like a fool because you were if you believe that shit, I'm sorry. You know, and I'm offended. I'm offended by this and I'm and it's like, you know, if you could lose that piece of it and keep the humor, what a fucking awesome life that would be, but they're just so fucking miserable. They all live in their parents' basements, clicking on, you know, Tinder I, I and know. swiping right, so. And, yeah, and masturbating a lot. <laughs> there we go. If you're running both engines for this much flow, the main engine would probably do well. VMAX just doesn't have a lot of gallons per minute, and that's what we need. And yesterday, I was having problems getting the crane to run, so I thought, okay, the, 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 Solenoids are frozen up, so we unthought of them, and that didn't work. Matthew here kept pestering me about, isn't there a valve that's closed somewhere? And it's like, so I go down and I look through all the valves. No, there's not, there's not even a valve between, they, they would do that. Finally, 
Greg Cotton asked the same question in a different manner. He said, do you have a relief valve open somewhere? Yes, I did. This is a relief valve. So basically, if you want no pressure on the system, you open this up and it drains the whole system down, the accumulator and everything. And I forgot I'd worked on the VMAC and I had this open so that I could connect that hose back there because it's one of those press found fittings. And if you have pressure on the system, you ain't gonna do it. So I emptied the pressure, I connected it up, and then I went on vacation to the Caribbean. So yeah, it's nice to have smart people around. is what it's like to run both engines at the same time. A little noisy, but it's warm. It's toasty in here. Hey, you have found a cold place to get this morning. Especially laying on the steel. The cold soak steel. Yeah, if we were in the water, it'd be better. But Brian is building in a, a platform to take a second battery like this one. This one sits on a platform down there, so he's figuring that out. You look comfy. Yeah, it's not, it's not uncomfortable. Of just cold. In my butt. Is, you had the heated jacket on. Do you have the battery in it this morning? Uh -huh. oh. It's off right now. It got too hot. Last time we, <laughs> we listened to the roar of this DeWalt supercharger charging his, charging his coat up. <laughs> Ernest Shackleton would have loved DeWalt heated jackets. <laughs> Ask him when we're clear of the blocks. Are we clear of the blocks yet? Negative. We're still moving? Still moving. About an inch so far. It's the blocks on the other side that matter. It's going this way now. We're off the blocks? We off? Off the blocks, yeah. Cool. All right, that does it. All right, I'm going to lower us back down slowly. Yeah. Coming down. Yeah, it lifts up like this and lowers like this. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so what we're doing is we're raising the boat using the VMAC is the hydraulic force and what will be the rudder pistons or cylinders to push the boat up. We've done that with that little pump over there, but it's not cutting the mustard today, so more power remember when you're painting to hold your mouth right yes i'm trying to we're going to start with some titanium white and some prussian blue we're just going to go ahead and slather that all over there we're going to do a happy battery stand a happy battery stand happy battery stand as we're you know painting the happy battery stand oh, we're selling that shit man. oh i saw half of it already we're just gonna go ahead and fill in the planes here they're sounding way too much like bob ross uh, it's supposed to be bob ross this is a happy battery blank <laughs> Matthew here has acquired us a new battery, like the battery we got, so we are doubling our capacity. Happy, happy battery. I'm just going to sit on the happy battery stand. Happy battery stand. Climbing practice day, because we are going to have to go up the mast. Here's Paul Nosak's place. Paul's running the crane down there. We are on the crane. Take a look at beautiful Tulsa. Say hello, Paul. <laughs> I'm gonna look, the mast is not gonna be this tall, so I'm gonna like this. Paul is always flying his flag. Oh, we're removing the hatches where the masts are gonna go. Here comes Bill from Grand Lake Docks in our work boat. And six months has done a little number on our brakes. Our new cans are good, but we've got a leak somewhere in the old ones. So. Back here. Really? Yeah, one well, of the new ones. Huh? Take the hose off back here. Cool thing about Taylor Cranes, they don't go anywhere without their service truck and all their parts and pieces on it, so it's a quick fix.
Brakes are figured out, ready to go. They're just going to drive the route one more time, make sure nobody parked in a corner or something where they can't get around. <laughs> Not well, it's breaking. I guarantee it. They, they're much louder. Oh, they're much louder. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about the creaking noise. No, the creaking's it's okay. Well. That's springs. Well, that's what you get. That's what you hear on sonar on the Tokyo Maroons. <laughs> okay, it's been six months, but at least we beat them to the water. Grain. That's what they normally do here. Grain and steel and fertilizer. Yeah. You know, they still have stevedores and Dusty here, he's a stevedore. He's the guy that's in charge of hooking the boat up to the crane, putting the straps on, all that good stuff. So the next step is the cribbit. And if the airbags come down far enough, we won't even need to use our jacks. This is Tom with TNT Insurance. Ask me about insurance, I'll send you to Tom. We forklift under it, and then we started unstrapping it. This is actually a Taylor Crane portion of the operation. They're responsible for the load. And the guys working the straps back there are Watco Industries. They're strapping her up. His head stevedore here is dusty. So those are the inside bolts. Chris, Chris will get the outside. You ready? Yeah. Ready! Taco is down. Houston, the taco is down. Here you got Betsy out on the job site today. I just take that crap and just kind of overlap on the other one. And I kind of fucked up cutting this shit. Sorry. I fucked up big time cutting this shit. Say that again, man. I fucked up. Would you make it too tight? Uh, I was trying not to cut his chain, so I didn't cut. I didn't plasma cut enough. Cameras go away. We know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. What's that, Doug? We don't look like idiots. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Okay. Take the load. Got it. All yours. No reward. So where do you want to crib it at? Just like we talked about. Right here. Right there at that catwalk. Okay. We can set it back down. You guys get your cribbing in. I know it's going to delay. Well, I think the roof would be all right. I'm just not positive, you know. Well, I don't think it. I don't think it's. I mean, we got the weight on it right, right now. Yeah, I know. It's your call. It's your boat. Whatever you want to do. Well, I can fix it, but there's some expensive solar panels up on either side of those two. Any boat can be an airplane once. <laughs> Shut up, Richard. <laughs> 
Oh, that's weird. Is it bad if I step backwards? <laughs> Is Phil in the water? Yeah, he's over there. Keith, Keith, you take some pictures for me for my kids because they're all part of it. Jesus Christ. Is that crying? No. I'm watching my, my boat's flying. I'm not far from crying here. I just like, keep not down. Yeah, that, that noise is not reassuring. No, the, the little squealing? Looking good. One way or another, she's getting wet. Hey. That is All right, Justin, just get your knife out and cut that strap loose. We knew it was heavy in the rear. So. Everybody likes a little badonk donk. <laughs> I know you engineered this pretty good, but how do you know? Until you, yeah. you know, this one of those. I've seen worse boat launches, you know, where yeah. they flip upside down and roll over. And Does this make you a captain now? No. When do you get to be a captain? I don't want to be a captain. Pilot? I, I got Brandon up there, he's a captain. I got Charlie, he's a captain. Rush. I've got a monkey on here, so this guy can climb anywhere. Yep. Okay. She's tapping out. Good. Good. See chest is next. Dry the bone. What's on the, the right? That's so. I have no idea. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Yeah. I'll make surprise. I need you a look on this other side because there's a through hole fitting right there. <laughs> That's not much different. Just a little bit tired. Dog, I talked to Paul. He's going to be here at two with the crane. Fantastic, man. Yeah. The one closest to you. That one, Doug, that one's throttle. <laughs> we fucked with that. We Contact! Oh, she feels good. Okay. We're gonna wait for five, about five minutes, just idling. Watch the, uh, check the oil pressure. Why didn't I take one off? Uh, only a pipe. Hey! Okay, dude. You're happy there? Pull them floor tiles 
valve around the base of there. Slowly comes. Slow. Is the bolt? Hey, stop. Okay, this bolt here. Yes, sir. Is that inside or outside? Outside. Okay, go I down. To swing more. Yeah, he needs to go. Swing that way more. Yeah. Hey. He's straight, straight down. Here, one second. Oh shit, hold on. Let me spin. Give me quite a bit. We can spin if we want to come down. Okay, come down. Alright. And you push, make sure that that's on. Push my way. Come up a little bit, up a little bit. Up! I, I needed to go up. He needs, he needs to boom up. Dog. He needs to boom. There. Okay, set up. Down. What do you need? Down. 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 Slowly. Okay. There we go. There we All go. right. We're in. We're in. Finally, the mizzen mass. First night on the boat on the water. Well, end of the day, the boat's in the water, the master up. Uh, we've got some trimming to do, but we knew that would be the case. And I tell you what, the thing that I really take away from this day is how fortunate I am to have the friends and the volunteers and the crew that I have that make Seeker what she is. Um, you know, this isn't for everybody, uh, but I really encourage you to reach out there and do what it is you need to do and put the people around you that will help you do that. Uh, cast off anybody who says you can't or pulls you down or drags you under or tries to do that because they're just a waste of time. Uh, these people that I have around me are fantastic and this boat is really theirs. We are the boat the internet built. Not all of the internet, but the, certainly the internet that showed up here that became a part of this project. Uh, this is the first night, boat's on the water and I'm spending the night on the boat alone gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna sleep like a baby. Well the overnight bilge watch is completed. Kind of nice being old when you gotta get up and pee several times during the night anyway. What a gorgeous morning. From ice on the ground back to short pants today. Welcome to Oklahoma. And today Greg and I have the task of trying to start trimming up the boat. So we move things around. Obviously this big pile of pipes needs to come from the low side. We'll put it over on the high side. Clint's coming out with his water tank. So we'll fill up the forward water tanks and we'll do a little bit of calculation to see how many pounds changes it. And then we'll get an idea of, you know, where to shift ballast to. Hey, Greg and I think that was a thousand pounds of battens that moved across. I could do a better estimate if I had my web page near me but that trimmed her up really well. I still think I poured an extra thousand pounds of lead over on the starboard side. She still has, oh, maybe a two degree, maybe a degree and a half list to her. So we'll keep making changes. Fifty inches to the water there. That's taking it all, isn't it? Yeah, I'll we'll have to have something run off to the... Yeah, yeah, that's great. You need to go get some anchors. Yes. 
so this part is the chain stop it goes down like that and then that chain will hold tight on your anchor all right some people can't hold on to the anchor yeah so that, that one yeah it's Paste that in there yeah we tied it to something hey, you know we have a youtube channel that pays for lunch okay and they want to see things like anchors falling in that okay that's pretty good too go ahead a little more okay that's what we're looking for are you stopping intentionally no this motor doesn't have the torque we need once it got this much spooled on it it needs a lot more torque so we're gonna have to change out this motor to a higher torque motor it'll go slower but we won't have to give it a bump like that because this won't drive the draw the boat in go ahead and give it some yeah see it won't even pick up the anchor all the way up yep no. it's trying to lift it yeah see it won't pick it up yeah i'll just snake it underneath the rollers so brandon's idea here is we're going to use the rope and try that on the capstans because they're smaller in diameter they'll give us more yep. pull that's a good one hand tying there son must eagle, be a calf roper. Eagle Scout, baby. There you go. Come on, baby. Come on. We'll just barely do it. So we'll just change our motor out. Okay. Perfect. So these are the carriage bolts that we put in here after we took the bolts out that were holding the fifth wheel hitch on. So we're just cutting them down so the chain doesn't snag on them. That's as far. <laughs> That's as far as I was gonna get it. Oh hell yeah. <laughs> So let me show you the uh, forward mast step. This, this is the forward mast. It used to be a utility pole, so it has a nice convenient hatchway into it. These are our two uh, air storage tanks. They're just uh, propane tanks. This is a salt water line that comes up to the deck so we can wash down the anchor. And uh, those yellow lines are the air lines coming off those tanks. This actually sits down on you know, a piece of steel going this way and this way to make an X and it actually just wedged down over the top of it. So to mount it in, we're just gonna fill it up here with steel and weld it in. Okay, now lower it down. Oh, like it was Are you planned. All the way? Yeah, let go. We're good. Now, the I'll slide one. it forward, maybe get this other one in the same hole. Okay, so far it's working out good. We're down an inch and a half in the bow, and we're up an inch and a half in the stern. And the balance point seems to be somewhere right behind the main mast here. So, more weight comes on tomorrow. That's going to do it for this video. Come back. Well, I think we may be taking the boat down the river a little bit. Stretch your legs. There you like that. And Captain Brandon will be on board here in a month when you're back off. Fantastic. It'll be a whole lot more enjoyable than my ride. Yeah. And we'll do the stability test first because Charlie wants us to. So it's a good idea. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to see what kind of weight it takes to make her pitch at certain angles. That's coming up too. Oh, and Greg brought this thing along, so we got to put that up on the deck. How much does that weigh, Greg? 100 pounds total. Oh, yeah. We that need two of them then. You definitely need to blast off around when you depart as a fucking Oh, yeah. Guy.